Leaked technical documentation has quietly torn away part of the secrecy surrounding Russia's next-generation stealth bomber, the PAC-DA. The files point to a revealing reality, Moscow is not simply designing a revolutionary platform from a clean sheet. Instead, it is systematically repurposing technologies originally engineered for the Su-57 fighter jet and grafting them onto its flagship strategic bomber project. For a program presented domestically as a symbol of technological sovereignty, the dependence on legacy solutions and a strained industrial base tells a very different story. At the center of the disclosures are critical subsystems used to manage the bomber's internal weapons bays, precision hydraulic actuators and geared hinge assemblies whose identifiers match hardware linked to the Su-57 program. These low observable mechanisms are essential for a stealth aircraft that must deploy long-range weapons without compromising its radar signature. By transplanting proven fighter components into the bomber, Russian designers are reducing development risk, shortening design cycles, and avoiding the cost of starting from zero on every subsystem. But this cost-saving logic is only half the picture. The other half is compulsion. Russia's defense industrial complex is wrestling with mounting export controls, loss of advanced tooling, and restricted access to precision machine systems that were once quietly sourced from Europe and other foreign suppliers. The sanctioning of key manufacturers, such as enterprises involved in actuator and hinge production, has constrained both capacity and quality margins for components that demand micrometer-level tolerances. These are not items that can simply be improvised without consequences, any inconsistency can ripple into reliability issues, acoustic signatures, or weapon bay timing errors, all of which are critical for a stealth bomber tasked with surviving modern air defenses. As a result, the PAKDA's timeline has drifted from early optimistic projections toward a more stretched, fragile schedule extending into the second half of the decade. Internal planning now orients around gradual subsystem completion and limited prototype integration, with early serial readiness discussed in terms that sound more aspirational than guaranteed. Industrial throughput, not aerodynamic theory, has become the decisive variable. On paper, the PAC-DA remains an ambitious answer to U.S. and Chinese long-range stealth platforms. It is envisioned as a large flying wing with extensive internal volume, optimized for subsonic endurance, intercontinental reach, and the carriage of standoff crews and potentially hypersonic missiles. Its projected payload and range, if realized, would allow Russia to threaten targets across continents without leaving friendly airspace, mirroring Western doctrines built around the B-2 and B-21. The design philosophy is clear, stay low observable, stay far away, and let the missiles do the dangerous work. However, the leaked information and observed constraints show how difficult it is for Russia to translate that philosophy into serial hardware at scale. While leveraging Su-57 derived elements reduces technical uncertainty, it also exposes a narrowing innovation bandwidth, the same cluster of factories, engineers, and suppliers is now expected to sustain upgraded Tu-160 bombers, produce Su-57s, and feed the PAC-DA pipeline all while working under sanctions, material shortages, and government pressure to deliver breakthroughs on schedule. In contrast, the U.S. B-21 Raider benefits from a sprawling, automated aerospace ecosystem and deep integration into advanced digital design and production chains. China's H-20, though shrouded in secrecy, is backed by a rapidly expanding electronics and manufacturing base. By comparison, Russia is trying to field a peer-class stealth bomber while its access to high-end electronics, composites, and precision tooling is being systematically constricted. This imbalance does not make the PAC-DA irrelevant. If Russia manages to field even a small fleet with credible low observability and compatibility with long-range cruise missiles such as the KH-101-102 family or future hypersonic systems, the aircraft would reinforce its nuclear and conventional deterrence posture. For regional actors and NATO planners, the appearance of a stealthier, missile-centric Russian bomber would still demand attention, additional sensors, and revised air defense concepts. But the path to that outcome is narrow. 
Every additional restriction on machine tools, high-grade alloys, actuator systems, and electronic components tightens the vice on the program. The reliance on SU-57 based components is thus more than a clever standardization trick, it is a warning sign of a program that is trading design purity and growth potential for survivability under sanctions. Ultimately, the PAC-DA story is evolving into a test case of whether Russia can deliver a genuinely modern strategic platform while operating inside an increasingly closed technological ecosystem. The leaks suggest that progress continues, but under conditions where each new tranche of sanctions, each supplier bottleneck, and each delayed test could push the bomber further from the sleek image promoted in official graphics, and closer to a constrained compromise shaped more by industrial limits than strategic vision.